the global economy is likely heading towards a disaster, and this could be the number one economic threat to your portfolio, and it's actually something that a lot of economists fear is coming, and that thing is stagflation. Ew. But just what the heck is stagflation? Is it really coming, and how to invest during a time of stagflation? My name's Lark, I make videos on investing. If you do like that topic, then subscribe to the channel and leave a thumbs up to let me know you do like this kind of content. So, what is stagflation? Well, in simple terms, stagflation is a prolonged period of high inflation combined with slow growth and high unemployment. Basically, a shit show economic situation. Not only do you lose your job, but then in that situation, you also can't afford to buy anything with the money that you might have left as the prices for your food and your energy all are exploding and keep going up, meaning you can buy less and less every day. So much winning. Look, stagflation is a tricky environment to navigate and to overcome because policy decisions to fight inflation will usually result in slow economic growth higher interest rates, more job losses, and cascading impacts to the economy. And likewise, policies that promote economic growth will usually lead to further inflation, creating a vicious cycle because the objective of those policies would be to stimulate the economy, creating more money within it. Basically, the central banks are in a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation. But are we in stagflation right now, or are we heading towards it very soon? Well, if you ask your local politician, they'll probably tell you that everything is going great. But the USA, especially, doesn't want to even admit that they are in a recession right now, though technically that is true, let alone that a period of stagflation is coming, because that's a scary time. However, they are beginning to recognize that there is a real risk of stagflation for the global economy, if inflation does not show any signs of cooling off, and it's continuing to rage right now. The fact is that prices are rising at rapid rates, economies are heading towards recessions, whether the USA, the EU, or the UK, and others, potentially very deep, bitter recessions, by the way. Central banks are raising interest rates across the world to try to slow down demand and purposely crash markets. And if that doesn't slow demand down enough to bring down consumer prices into lower wage inflation, then we will be experiencing a period of stagflation before you know it. Now, the 1970s was the last period in history where the global economy actually experienced a period of stagflation. Throughout the 70s, the Federal Reserve would basically cycle between raising the Fed fund rate to fight inflation, but then lowering it again when a recession was close to happening. But of course, that only sent inflation higher. The only way out of the stagflation mess was to make the recession severe and cause pain, which is exactly what Jerome Powell said he intends to do. But there was so much fear in the market that it actually took a decade for this all to pass over. Now, before I break down the economic impacts and how to invest during a time of stagflation, let me just interrupt the flow briefly to let you know about wealth mastery. This is my weekly cryptocurrency investor report. Every single issue is absolutely jam-packed with value on topics such as altcoins, decentralized finance, airdrops, NFTs, and more. Our members love it. I know you will too. Sign up for free using the link in the description. So how does stagflation affect the economy? Well, stagflation's impacts on the economy actually happen in several different ways. As interest rates increase, this actually brings down bond prices and stock market valuations. Consumer spending slows down because, of course, consumers are earning less money relative to the rising cost of their food, their housing, and basically everything else like medical expenses and all that stuff. This then brings down corporate revenues and creates a vicious repeating cycle that is hard to escape from. And of course, we can't ignore the debt spiral either. Government and consumer debt levels are much higher today than they were back in the 1970s. That's, of course, when we had our last major period of stagflation. This means interest rates can't be raised as high as before to help bring things back down, help cool off inflation 
because the cost to service the debt is already way too damn high. Look, if the world is really heading this way and we are about to experience brutal stagflation for a prolonged period of time as it happened previously, it is worrying to think about the consequences of this potential depression we're heading into. It will be required, of course, just to bring prices and costs back under control. So then as investors, we have to ask ourselves, how do you invest during a time of stagflation? Well, first and foremost, to survive and to thrive as an investor in times of stagflation, you need to carefully consider the best assets for an inflationary environment. And of course, in uncertain times, a diversified portfolio of assets can really help with managing the downside risk, which is significant in the markets right now. You may want to consider investing in the following areas during a period of stagflation. Real estate, of course, this tends to be largely uncorrelated to the stock market in times of economic struggle and rents will usually go up in line with inflation. So that's a positive, sometimes even outpacing it. What about old metals? Well, it is often seen as the main hedge against inflation, but sometimes it really does feel like the glory days of gold and silver have faded a little bit. They've lost their shine. The returns are not what they used to be. Nevertheless, diversifying into gold and silver, I think can still offer some protection to your portfolio during these periods of stagflation. I personally invest in metals and will continue to. Another interesting area to pay attention to, commodities. You know, all those raw materials that are used to actually make the things in the world that we use, the products that we buy and consume. During periods of stagflation, things like oil and gas are likely to outperform the stock and the bond markets, given, of course, the world's current dependence on those key resources. We can also add in the crisis brewing in Europe, OPEC's recent announcement as well to scale back production next year, all could send energy prices soaring. And of course, as the world is moving towards more and more renewables and battery powered technologies, we also have to look at the commodities like copper and iron and nickel, which are going to continue to be in demand over the next few years to fill in for that technological revolution. And what about cryptocurrencies? Well, as we know, it's a mixed bag in terms of risk and reward for investors because it's a market that is still maturing and the volatility in crypto remains extreme and very infamous. But if you believe that Bitcoin's gold 2.0, that Ethereum is like the new Apple, then that the technology from NFTs and DeFi and all this stuff is going to disrupt a wide array of markets, as I do, then perhaps you consider continuing to allocate a percentage of your overall portfolio into cryptocurrencies. And finally, defensive stocks. These are companies who make and sell the essential items that consumers will need even during times of stagflation. Now, Ray Dalio, for example, he's invested Bridgewater's portfolio heavily into these kind of companies. Things like supermarkets, energy companies, healthcare. These are all the essential sectors that are not going to disappear during a time of stagflation. People still need all that stuff. However, you may want to avoid investing in growth stocks as they will typically be hit hardest during this period of stagflation. You need to wait. Stagflation will give you opportunities to buy some really well-known names in the growth stock space with proven track records at heavily discounted prices. Only, of course, invest in companies that you do believe will be able to stand the test of time and go on to dominate their respective fields. Anyway, I hope that this video was a useful overview for you on the current situation, the threat of stagflation and what it will likely do to economy and how you can protect yourself investment wise during this period. Let me know down below if you think that the economy is indeed heading towards a period of stagflation or not down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.